Hello everyone. In this video we're going to be dealing with radical expressions. We have x minus 6 divided by square root of x equals 37 and we're supposed to evaluate or find a numerical value for x minus 6 times the square root of x. I'll be presenting two methods even though the first method will be incomplete. I still want to talk about it and let's get started. So first method is basically going to be about solving this equation first because whenever you're given an expression you may want to know the x value so that you can plug it in and let's see how we can proceed. So let's go ahead and subtract 37 and add the 6 over root x to both sides and then cross multiply square root of x times x minus 37 equals 6. Great. Let's go ahead and square both sides to get rid of the radical. This gives us x times x minus 37 to the second power is equal to 36. Now take a look at this equation carefully. First of all, when you square both sides in a radical equation, you may be introducing extraneous solutions. So at the end, you need to check what you found. So you have to plug it in. So plugging in the values, it's going to be kind of painful, but we're going to end up with a cubic equation with three solutions, or there are supposed to be solutions or candidates. So what you need to do is then you need to go ahead and plug them in. So, but solving this cubic is going to be a little painful because of the coefficients. You can use Wolfram Alpha or any other tool. But let me just tell you what the values look like. Uh, the x values that you find from here, they're pretty much going to look like this, 0 0.00069 or 34.52 or 39.39, something like that, approximately. So those are the values, but again, we need to make sure we plug them in and check. Uh-oh, this is not good, right? Okay. We don't want to use this method because it's not very elegant. So the, obviously the second method uses an important strategy for these kinds of questions, problems that appear on Olympiads, math competitions, you know, things like that. They usually have a little uh, trick to them. That's what is going on here. First of all, I want you to notice one thing here. 37 is 36 plus 1. And you might be like asking, like, why is it not 35 plus 2? What, what is so special about 36 and 1? So we have a 6 here. And 6 squared is equal to 36. That's why I want to break it down like that. You'll see in a little bit how this is helpful. Okay? So let's go ahead and do the following. x minus 6 over square root of x equals 36 plus 1. Now, I broke it down so that there are four terms. And I'm going to put the terms together in such a way that it's factorable and simplifiable. I don't know if it's a word, but we just made it. So let's go ahead and subtract 36 and add 6 over 36 to both sides. So in other words, bring this over to the right and bring this over to the left. And now we have the following. Well, this is not good yet. Let's make a common denominator. And then at this point, I'm thinking x minus 36 is factorable by difference of two squares. Wait a minute. x is not a perfect square. Well, maybe it is if you think about it as square root of x squared, right? So if you write x minus 36 as follows, then this just becomes a perfect a difference of two squares, not perfect square, because 36 is 6 squared. And as you can see, this is a difference of two squares, which can be factored as square root of x plus 6 times square root of x minus 6. And we've done similar problems before, so hopefully you'll recognize this if you you've seen the previous videos. If you haven't, please check them out. Now, we have this for the left-hand side. Let's go ahead and write it. Square root of x plus 6. Let's substitute that here for x minus 36. And on the right-hand side, we have square root of x plus 6, which should be familiar to you, right? Divide by 6. Awesome. Now, you can multiply both sides by 6 if you want, but that's not necessary. But one thing I want you to notice is that the square root of x plus 6 appears on both sides. So why not cancel it out? Now, canceling out things is problematic sometimes. For example, if you had an equation like a squared is equal to 2a, 
then then if you just divide both sides by a you end up with a equals 2 but that's not the whole picture because a equals 0 is also a solution which you lost by dividing both sides by a which you shouldn't be doing the right approach is subtracting and factoring so let's do it that way let's go ahead and subtract what's on the right hand side like this and then factor it out okay when we do factor that out we get square root of x minus 6 minus 1 over 6 obviously equals 0 right great so what is this gonna give us right so first of all I want you to notice one thing that square root of x plus 6 cannot be 0 why is that so because square root of x cannot be negative 6 that's why in other words if this is equal to 0 this implies square root of x equals negative 6 but if x is a real number its square root obviously is not going to be negative make sense okay great oh by the way I think we made a mistake here it's not supposed to be I don't know why I divide by 6 okay so here something happened and I just turned this square root of x magically to 6 so this is supposed to be square root of x let me go ahead and fix that real quick and this is supposed to be square root of x and then this is supposed to be square root of x and then finally this is supposed to be square root of x so instead of the 6 we are supposed to have square root of x okay great now this is fixed and what I need to do is this can't be 0 so you can just divide by that or just set the other factor equal to 0 square root of x minus 6 minus 1 over square root of x is equal to 0 this implies square root of x minus 1 over square root of x is equal to 6 wow what a problem right okay this is supposed to be an easier way second method right not necessarily but at least it's going to solve the problem in a nicer way so far we got something nicer but what are we looking for right we are looking for x minus 6 times the square root of x great that's what I'm looking for x minus 6 times the square root of x let's copy that here this is what I need but how am I gonna find it here right from here how am I gonna find it let's make a common denominator and see what happens x minus 1 over square root of x is equal to 6 and then you can just cross multiply x minus 1 is equal to 6 square root of x 6 square root of x and then subtracting 6 square root of x from both sides and adding 1 is going to give you the answer which is kind of interesting I think right well we are able to find this expression and so on and so forth now I'm thinking about a third approach for this kind of problem could we use that third approach possibly well we could probably do this instead of solving for x we could get a you know kind of like a cubic equation from here and then isolate x cubed and then replace x cubed with something but how do you do that well we kind of need to set it equal to a constant like k and then isolate the radical square both sides and then this is going to give you a square root square and then hopefully you can plug it in I don't I'm not sure if it's going to work but I just thought about it real quick and I wanted to share with you and this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.